Look, I think wearables have really interesting technology that understands, you know, helps you understand the human body. So we have sensors in there, like temperature sensors that are monitoring you 24 seven, um, LEDs that help drive your heart rate, heart rate variability and respiratory rate. And, you know, we've done a couple of research studies now and, and the early data is suggesting that, um, you know, our wearable and other wearables can be actually very helpful in detecting the early onset of symptoms related to coronavirus. Wow, okay, so it's a ring, because I know there's, we, we talked to a guest earlier who's on a Disruptor 50 list, that maybe Heartbreak, you, you should have been on that list as well, who know, maybe you have been, I, who knows. Uh, you know, everybody is trying to figure out how to track vitals so we can understand these subtle changes in our body, temperature, heart rate, whatever. In your opinion, if we're using an aura ring, what, what would be the one or two things that we would need to look for first? Is it heart rate, just not sleeping, body temp? Yeah, no, um, I, look, I think what's interesting is all the data together gives a, a better signal, but our average consumers, um, you know, we, we had a user come out and, you know, he saw his data change and, and mainly it was heart rate, heart rate variability, but actually temperature and respiratory rate being, you know, the most meaningful. And the big changes that he saw, he'd been using our product for a year, he hadn't seen before, and he decided to go get a test uh, for coronavirus. And, and this was early March, and turned out he was positive. He said the whole time he didn't really feel any, any large symptoms. He described himself as asymptomatic. And you know, by looking at our product and our app um, every day, he was able to see those changes in his body, even though he couldn't feel them. Yeah, and it's heart rate variability, is it not? Those, those slight tweaks and changes in our own bodies, unique to us each, that may be an early warning sign of not, not just COVID-19, by the way, Harpreet, but a lot of things. Yeah, no, it's, it's uh, the study, you know, we announced a study with UCSF and uh, Rockefeller Neuroscience Institute at West Virginia. And both of those are, as you just pointed out, Brian, looking at um, COVID-19 and other influenza-like illnesses. Um, you know, we know the work environment unfortunately it can be these areas where just the common cold and common flu spreads. And so I think, you know, companies like the Sands, you know, innovators in their space, right? They set the standard um, and other sports leagues and, and many, many more are actually very interested in using this kind of technology uh, to understand, you know, understand what's going on. And frankly, you know, give peace of mind to their employees who are back to work in, in a tough situation. Yeah. So the NBA may be using your rings. <laughs> Look, I, I think rumors are interesting. I, I can't comment on all of them, um, you know, right now. But uh, I, I would say if you think about going back to work in any environment, including a sports league, you know, uh, how do we make sure as employers, right, that we're keeping the place safe? And frankly, a lot of that now is coming down to testing. And how are you running testing in the environment? No one wants to get a nasal swab, you know, up their nose every single day. And, and frankly, it also is pretty costly to test here. <laughs> I know, I don't know if you've done it yet, but it, it, feels, it almost feels like it's touching your brain. Uh, they go so far up there. But you know, it's uncomfortable, right? And um, you know, it also is expensive and we have a shortage of tests in this country. So uh, luckily what we found is that by actually looking at a workforce population and identifying the high risk portion, you can figure out who to test. You know, frankly, it's actually more convenient for employees it's better than just going in alphabetical order. It's more, you know, scientifically proven and accurate. And, and frankly, I think it also just gives every worker, every employee peace of mind. And, you yeah. know, uh, let that's, let, that's so important right now. Let, let me just wrap it up with this, this very basic question, which I know you, I'm sure you get a lot. How long does the battery last? <laughs> Actually, that's why a lot of people love us. Um, the battery lasts a week. Um, so you don't have to really worry about charging it every single night and people get around to it on the weekends. Um, so it's, uh, it's a tiny ring, uh, you know, it's really small, uh, you know, check it out, orring.com. Are, are they available? I mean, are they, can you get them or you have supply chain issues? I mean, a lot of things everybody wants are sold out. You know, you can't get an inflatable pool for four uh, months, Harpreet. Can you get your <laughs> ring? Yeah, I, I remember I couldn't, you couldn't even buy a thermometer, right? On Amazon for, for the longest time. Yes, um, we actually are in stock. Um, you know, luckily we've been growing as a company and have been able to scale our manufacturing pretty well. Um, you know, there, it's, it's, it's definitely been, you know, interesting times, but yes, this, this is something you can buy today, yeah. uh, just by visiting our website.